Hey folks, as you know, I travel a whole lot today. I wanted to talk to you about a new little storage option that I bought and do a speed test to see how it compares to other options out there. Hi folks, please jump over to mattgranger.com. You can scroll down and sign up to the mailing list. It's all free. Get up to date with what's going on. You can go up the top here and see all the different events I'm holding around the world, plus EOIs for places I'm considering going if you'd like me to come to your town. And check out the video series, all of my different complete download series for your entertainment. So as a small primer for everyone, when you're traveling, the amount of data you rack up can really add up. And I like to have at least one backup and my most important stuff I'll put to the cloud as well. Now I use a MacBook Pro and one of the things I like most about it is that it's using all flash memory. So as I understand it, other than the fan, there's no moving parts in it. So unlike hard drives that you know take too much of a shake or a good knock, they're dead and maybe unrecoverable, solid state memory is really the future. So just taking a little survey to look at size, this is a typical external three and a half inch hard drive. Now these do go up to six and eight terabyte now, huge capacity, but they're big and they need an external power supply. Compare that to say a two and a half inch. This is a reasonably small one. I really like this one. This is a lacy uh, Porsche design one. It's all metal. I picked this up in Paris and I've had no problems with it and I'm really impressed by the speed. And maybe I'm, you know, uh, deluded by how well built it is. I feel like it's really durable, but still inside a little disc spinning really fast. So there's a risk there, but a lot smaller. And obviously being two and a half inch, you only need the USB three cable to power it as well. Now you can get even smaller ones, like check out this little Seagate one. I got this one in Thailand. That's pretty much the exact size of the drive just with a coating wrapped around it. They're really, really tiny. Now, as I'm sure you know, SSD is becoming more and more popular and SSDs typically are a two and a half inch configuration as well, but slightly smaller than this. But today I want to run through a bunch of different options uh, that I also you know, consider to be potentially viable. One is the Humble thumb drive. This is a 128 gigabyte thumb drive from Kingston, USB 3, we'll compare that. Then I have this little guy which is a Transcend jump dri jet drive and it's a tiny little SD card basically, but it sits flush with the SD card reader on my MacBook Pro. That's 256 gigabyte and it just sits there so I can use that for overflow memory. Then I'm also going to compare a simple Transcend, uh, sorry, Lexar uh, 64 gigabyte SD card. They're the, uh, it's one of the really fast ones, 633, um, to see how fast that will do some transfers. And then finally, considering this is your two and a half inch hard drive, this is a small one. I picked up this little guy and it's tiny. This is SSD technology from Samsung. Uh, you know, I bought this myself uh, online. It's a full terabyte, it weighs nothing, comes with its own little cable, and I'm really interested to see. I, I honestly thought it was going to be more like this size when I got it, um, because buying 500 gigabyte was less than half the price of buying one terabyte, but I thought I don't wanna carry two, better to have one. Now seeing how tiny they are, definitely could handle having two but I'll be interested to see just how fast it is compared to all the other options because you know not all solid state memory is built the same. Okay folks, so I've got all of the different drives here now. The new little Samsung T1, my Lacey three and a, two and a half inch portable hard drive. I've got just a 64 gig uh, Lexa memory card. I've got my Transcend 265 gigabyte jump drive and then also my Kingston USB 3 128 gig thumb drive. So to transfer, I'm gonna do a single video file that's 3.47 gig, plus a folder of images that has, how many? 26 items and it's 490 megabytes total. So though all those files are on the hard drive and this, uh, sorry, on the SSD of my Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, and it's using the latest generation, the fastest memory that they have. So let's see how long it takes for each one to transfer. 
First up, let's do the lacy drive, and for each of them, I'm going to use the cable that was supplied with them. Sometimes the cable does make a bit of a difference, but let's just see how these go. This is the Porsche design one. Uh, let's wait for that to load up, and then there it is. And I've got the clock in the background here, so we know how long it took. I'll drop the file at when it gets to the minute. Okay, let's start off with this folder full of images and we drop it right as it hits the minute. There we go. So let's see how long that takes. Okay, that was nine seconds. Pretty impressive. Now let's grab that movie file. It is this one. And I'll drop it at 30 seconds just to save me waiting so long. There we go. So this will obviously take longer. It's only a single file, but it's still seven times bigger. So we're coming up to 20 seconds there. That's 40. 42, 43 seconds. Okay, not bad. Now let's try the Lexar memory card. That's a 633 speed 95 megabyte per second option. Here's our folder. And it's going to untitled this time. Okay, so comparing it to the hard drive, it's already obviously longer. The other hard drive only took nine seconds. There we go, that was 35 seconds. Okay, now the video file. There we go. It's got 42 seconds to beat. Now, of course, even though some of these are sharing the kind of memory we've got rotating hard drives and then all the rest are solid state the way they write and the kind of chip they use is different in each of them so I am genuinely interested I'm thinking my thumb drive is going to be the slowest but let's just see 52 seconds not bad okay now let's eject both of those Next up, I'll plug in the our last two options. That is the, oh no, sorry, two of our last three. The jump drive and the super lightweight little T1. Okay, we'll do the transcend jump drive first. Okay, here's our folder. And there she goes. That'd be 11 seconds. So that's just behind the hard drive. So let's do the video file right at 30 seconds past to save us some time again. There we go. So it's a bit slower than the SD card, surprisingly. There we go. That was 57 seconds. Okay. Now we do the same things again, but we'll be doing it to the little T1. Just so you know, I'm using the same USB port on each mic, um, each one as well to make sure you know everything's legit. Okay, let's try again. Here we are with the folder to the T1. There we go. Oh, that was like two or three seconds. Let's call it three seconds. I did not expect that. Wow. Okay, um, so at 30 seconds past, let's do the video file. I didn't know that, yeah. I thought the Lacey at nine seconds was unbeatable. Okay, video file. There we go. Wow. Eight seconds. That's a bit of a clear record. The next best one was 42 seconds. So lastly, let's eject both of those again. 
and then at the next minute I'll be trying my USB. I know this is not as fast, um, but they're really getting good in price, so I think it's worth throwing in just to see how far off the mark it is. Having said they're getting cheap, it's still not, you know, a bargain, but they're really coming down in price. So I will throw a link in the caption where you can find all the things that I'm demoing today. <laughs> How brilliant. Now in the middle of the test for the first time, the, the thumb drive is showing up in my computer for some reason. Amazing timing. Thank you, Kingston. I wonder what that is, if I need to restart. I, honestly, it's never, I feel like I'm on a bad date. It's never happened to me before. Okay, it actually found itself, it just took a couple of minutes. So let's try into the Kingston thumb drive then. First of all, with the folder. That was one second after, so I'll take that off. Actually, it's doing a lot better than I expected. Uh, not too bad. So 26, so take a second off, 25. And now let's do the movie file. And we'll do that again from the hour, from the minute. Okay, so the big file is really slowing down on this guy. Uh, the slowest was 57 seconds, so let's see how this does. It's at 40 seconds and only a quarter of the way through. Okay, so safe to say this is really not a viable option. We're still going, still going. I mean, it really depends what you're doing. For a thumb drive, for me, this is fine. I rarely transfer a three and a half gig file onto it. Um, you know, for Word documents or even for playing videos straight off it where, you know, you've got a normal bit rate, it does okay, but certainly you compare that this took eight seconds for the T1 and we're now, what, at two and a half minutes? Yeah, flash memory, obviously they're not all built the same. Uh, well, that was a good nap and we're still not done. There we go. So really not in the contention. So some pretty interesting results there, huh? Uh, let's review the performance. So in reverse order, the Kingston did the whole folder in just 25 seconds, but then the big file took minutes. Just ridiculous. So that has to come in last place. Next up will be the SD card. That took 35 seconds for the folder and 52 seconds for the big file. So it did really well with the big file but not as well with the, the folder of smaller files, which is counterintuitive seeing a card is made for taking loads of 50 megish images. Uh, next up would be the little jump drive. That took 11 seconds for the folder and 57 seconds for the big file. So it took a little bit longer again, but it was triple as fast on the folder. Then second place is going to be the Lacey. So the Porsche design, that was only nine seconds for the folder, smoked most things, and only 42 for the big file. So it came second in both tests. But by a country mile, the Samsung, the new T1 that I bought, three seconds and eight seconds. The nearest one for the big file was 42 seconds compared to eight seconds. That's crazy. So very glad that I picked this one up, as well as being not at all susceptible to some wobble unless you, you know, bent it or flexed it to actually break the memory that's inside. This seems like a really great option, but it does come at a price. As I said, buying this was more than buying two 500 gigabyte ones, uh, probably four times the price of buying the one terabyte Lacey um, and compared to memory cards as well. Well, memory cards, if you add it up, you know, you got a dozen 64 gig ones, they would end up probably costing more than this, but for me and the kind of work I do and wanting something small, light, and above all else, not susceptible to you know vibration damage, great investment for me. Love to hear your thoughts. What do you use on the move? And I'll see you soon.